Today's Gospel reading, we have the call of Levi, also known as Matthew. And note that he's called not just to follow our Lord, which was what our Lord says to him, come follow me, but he's not just called to, to follow him, not just called to be a disciple, but to be an apostle. In other words, one of those closest to our Lord, one of those who would be... Um, who would have very uh, great responsibilities in the early church, one of those upon whom would depend the spread of the kingdom of God to other nations. So entrusting him with great authority and, and um, you know, just putting tremendous trust in him. So when it comes to our Lord calling his apostles, it, it's interesting to note that he chose individuals who in many ways were totally unqualified or unsuited for the position. So for example, many of them were fishermen. You know, even when we think of uh, St. Paul, for example, even though St. Paul was well-educated, he was an ardent persecutor of the church. But as we see in his writings, he was a very poor public speaker. And it was primarily through public speaking that he won converts. So God often calls those who are not at all suited. And why does God do this? Well, one of the reasons is that God wants to manifest his power acting through human weakness. So we see, for example, in the lives of many saints, such as St. John Marie Vianney, also a very poor speaker, had a hard time with uh, his education, and yet he became such a great saint. And he could, you know, when he first gave his, his first homily or tried to give it, he just forgot everything he wanted to say. He was so incompetent, he would make so many mistakes, and yet God worked wonders through him. So it's a reminder to us that even though we might think we're not qualified, God can do wonders through us, provided that we trust him and make the effort to follow him. So God shows these individuals who are totally unsuited to manifest his great power. But secondly, God calls these individuals, in the case of Levi, who's a public sinner, he's a tax collector, he betrayed his, his um, Jewish religion, and he's working for the enemy. It's like he's, he's kind of like the worst sinner conceivable. It's a reminder to us that God calls the sinners, and he calls the sinners to repentance, and not just to repentance, but to enter into a relationship with him. So sitting at the table with, with um, Levi and the other tax collectors and sinners, yes, it appears very scandalous to the Pharisees. They understand that if you're going to hang around with, with sinners, you're going to be influenced by them. And especially sitting down to a meal, it implies a very close relationship. It implies friendship. So our Lord eating with the sinners, he's indicating, look, I want to be your friend. So our Lord is eating with them, not because he wants to follow their sinful ways, but he's calling them to conversion. So um, note how he says, uh, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick do. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And the Pharisees, some, or at least some of them, considered themselves to be righteous. When a person is truly righteous, they're also going to be humble. In other words, a person who's truly righteous and able to act the way that God calls them to, they usually are able, not usually, but always are able to acknowledge, look, it's not my doing, it's the grace of God that enables me to be the way that I am. In other words, a person who's truly righteous, they're going to be humble, they're going to, they're going to acknowledge that it's all God's doing. So in other words, in reality, they would be sinners if it were not for the grace of God. And so God is calling the sinners, those who are in need of a physician, and that's basically all of us. All of us are sinners. Okay, maybe we don't commit mortal sin, but still, we are in need of a physician. And we have to be humble enough to acknowledge that we need a physician. We need to turn to our Lord who can heal us, who can transform us, in the same way that he transformed someone like Levi. So we can be transformed and others can be transformed. And one of the, one of the good messages of this gospel passage that we ought to take to heart is, you know, we may have individuals in our lives that we care about, that we're praying for, and they may be like so far gone, they may be like into so many bad things and leading a very sinful life, but God loves them. 
and God is calling them. And if God is able to transform individuals like Levi, he's able to transform them also. And when we look at the history of the church, there have been certain saints who initially were great sinners. Saint Augustine, for example, he became not just a great saint, but a doctor of the church. Even Saint Francis of Assisi, he led a very worldly life initially until he underwent his conversion. So God does this repeatedly. And it's also a reminder to us that God calls every one of us. We may not be called to be a disciple in the sense of following our Lord more closely or, or like the priesthood or religious life. We may not be called to be an apostle, but every one of us is called to follow our Lord. Now, it would be nice if our Lord appeared to us and says, you know, come follow me. But he doesn't do that, but he does call each and every one of us. And I think it's worthwhile for us to imagine ourselves, you know, so often we're just kind of daydreaming, we're, we're absorbed in worldly things. And, you know, imagine hearing the voice of Christ, maybe calling us by name and saying, follow me. Now you and I, yes, we're followers of our Lord, but we need to follow our Lord even more faithfully, even more zealously, more ardently. In other words, to become more and more like him. And when we become more and more like him, we also grow in humility and we will look upon those around us not with contempt or scorn or, or, you know, thinking ourselves so much better, but we will look at them with great compassion and great love as he did. And we will also be more likely to befriend the sinner and to lead the sinner to Christ.